Hello and welcome to lesson 4 of the Beyond the Basic Stuff with Python course. This lesson is going to follow along with chapter 2 of the Beyond the Basic Stuff with Python course textbook, which you can read online for free at inventwithpython.com beyond. In this lesson, we're going to talk about environment setup. And that's sort of a vague term, so let me explain it. Environment setup is the process of organizing your computer so that you can write code. And this involves several different things. It involves installing any necessary tools and configuring them and handling any hiccups that can occur during setup. Uh, there is no single setup process because everyone has a different computer with a different operating system or even different versions of the same operating system and you could have different versions of the Python interpreter installed in all of these things that can add complexity to how your computer is set up. Oftentimes I'll be helping out with organizing weekend learn Python workshops, and the thing about those is that oftentimes we have to have a pre-workshop workshop just so that all the students can spend time to make sure that Python is properly installed on their computer and they can run it. And there could be several things that prevent that, and you don't want to waste the first two hours of the Learn Python workshop just trying to get everybody's computers up and running. Now there's a lot of high-level abstract concepts that come with environment setup, and most of the time most software developers sort of learn this piecemeal over the years with experience, but learning these concepts and tools right now, even though it seems like a headache, is really going to help you in the long run understand what your computer is actually doing and how things actually work on it. And so in this lesson, we're going to talk about the file system. Now, the file system is how your operating system organizes data to be stored and retrieved. A file could be something like a photo or a word processing document or many other things, but it's a bit of data that you want to be able to treat as one unit. A file has two key properties. There's a file name and a path. And the path specifies the location of the file in the file system. Now what I mean by that is that if you look at your operating system's file explorer, such as Windows's file explorer will look something like this, you can see that there's a lot of folders, and the folders can contain other folders, and then those folders could contain files. The file explorer is a representation of the file system. It's basically a large collection of files inside folders, which could be inside other folders. We can also look at the file explorer for Mac OS, and it's going to look different for every single operating system, but it's sort of the same thing. Here we have some files and folders, and they're inside this folder, which is inside this folder, and so on. Same thing for Linux as well. Now the older word for folder is directory, and those two terms you can use interchangeably. I tend to use folder because that's the more modern term. Now one thing that you should know about file systems is that they have a root folder. This is the folder that contains all the other folders. Uh, here on Windows, this is my computer, the root folder is written as C colon slash. We call this the C drive. This is sort of a holdover from when personal computers had the A drive and B drive were floppy disk drives, and then C drives were hard drives. So that's where the convention of C comes from, and that's really only on Windows. But as you can see, I have a lot of folders in my root folder, and then these folders will have other folders as well. Uh, these folder names make up the file path, and as you can see, each of the folders is separated by a backslash on Windows. On Mac and Linux, these are going to be forward slashes. There's actually going to be a lot of differences between the operating systems, but they all have the same underlying concepts. There's just going to be tiny variations like what kind of slash that they use, and I'll be explaining those during these lessons as well. Now, the typical way that we represent paths in Python is with the pathlib module. And we can use this by saying from pathlib import path with a capital P. And this is great. We can create a path object by calling the path constructor and then passing it, say, uh, a name of a folder. So here 
This is just spam, like a spam folder. And we can even use the divisor operator sort of to represent the, the separator between different paths. So I could combine these path objects together and it would form this file path. Now, as you can see, this returns a Windows path object because I'm on Windows. On other operating systems, you'll get different classes, but they all work the same in Python. Now, whenever you have code in Python that uses uh, file paths, such as the open function, normally what we would do is, I'll make this a raw string so I can type a single slash, we would just create a string object that represents this path. However, as you'll see, using these path objects is often more convenient to write out code, and the path objects also have a number of useful methods as well. So instead, we could do something like this. And really, as long as you have this one path object on the left, you could still, you don't have to create the path, individual path objects. You could just have something like this instead. Now, this will be an error because I don't have an actual file or directory with that path. But I just wanted to explain about the pathlib module. We'll be using it again and again throughout this course. Now, another concept in file systems is that all users have a folder called their home folder or their home directory. And this is for a user's own files on their computer. Most computers can have multiple users and we don't necessarily want every user having file access to all the other users' own files. So we can separate these by putting them into a user's home folder. Now on Windows, the home folders are all located inside the c colon slash users folder. So my username on my computer is Al. And so my home folder is c colon slash users slash Al. On Mac, all the home directories or home folders are in the slash users folder. And on Linux, all the home folders are in the slash uh, home folder. Now, operating systems tend to abstract away a lot of the file system. You might be just used to dealing with the desktop, or maybe you have a music and downloads folder. I'd like to just point out that all of these more conceptual folders right here actually do have a place in the file system. For example, the desktop which just appears as desktop right here. This is actually in users al slash, and then a folder called desktop. Notice how all the folders and files that appear on my desktop here, they're actually right here. This is um, slash users slash al slash desktop is the same. Uh, and the same goes for the downloads folder and the music folder and pictures and all these other things that oper modern operating systems tend to give you. But under the hood, there's just the same file paths separated by these slashes. Now, your scripts will almost certainly have permissions to read from and write to the files in your home folder. So it's an ideal place to store the files that your Python programs will work with, or a place to store your .py files directly. And in Python, we can find a path object for the current user's home folder by calling path.home and that will return a path object for that folder. Next, let's talk about the current working directory, which is abbreviated as CWD. I guess you could call it the current working folder as well, but since CWD is the common acronym, I'm just gonna call it the current working directory. Every program that runs on your computer has a current working directory setting, which means that any file names or paths that don't begin with a root folder uh, when you write them out, uh, you can assume those are relative to the CWD. Now for your Python programs, you can see this by running path.cwd, and that will return a path object with the folder that is the current working folder, or current working directory. In this case, my python.exe program, which is the Python uh, interpreter software, is running from this folder right here. So if I ran code that looked like this, open path, spam, eggs, and ham, Python would assume that 
the actual location that I'm referring to is inside this folder, the CWD, and then a spam folder in here, and then a an eggs folder inside that spam folder, and then a ham file or folder inside that eggs folder. You can see that representation like this. Now you can change what a Python program's current working directory is. Uh, let's call the os.change directory command, and then we'll supply a new folder that should be the current working directory. Let's just say, let's set this to the home folder, say. And now when we try to look at what the current working directory is, we can see it's now my home folder. And so this same code would refer to a folder spam that's inside my home folder, al, and then an eggs folder inside spam, and then a ham folder or file inside of eggs. So this touches on a concept of absolute versus relative paths. These are the two ways that you can specify a file path. So an absolute path will always begin with the root folder. If I ever type a folder that looks like this, This is an absolute file path because it begins with the root folder c colon slash. On Mac OS and Linux, this would just be slash. That would be the root folder on those operating systems. Uh, the other one is relative paths, and these are going to be relative to a program's current working directory. This is what I did right here, where if I have just this spam eggs ham path, this does not begin with the root folder. So I could have several spam folders on my computer. So I could have several folders named spam on my computer, but if I'm using this in my program, uh, Python will see, oh, okay, it doesn't begin with a root path, so I'll assume that this is a relative path that is relative to the current working directory. So what it actually is, is this. And this would be the absolute file path made from that relative path. If I change the current working directory, then this same code right here, uh, the same path, relative path right here, would be relative to the new current working directory. Now there's two special folder names, the dot folder and the dot dot folder. And these aren't real folders, but they're actually just special names that you can use in a path. The dot folder, which is a single period, is a shorthand for this directory, while two periods or two dots, the dot dot folder, means the parent folder. And you can use these in relative or absolute file paths. Now let's give a example file system right here. We have the root folder C, and then we have folders bacon and eggs in C, as well as a spam.txt file. And the bacon folder has a fizz folder, which contains another file also called spam.txt, but that's separate from this spam.txt file. And then bacon also has its own spam.txt, and the eggs folder also has its own spam.txt. Let's pretend that c colon slash bacon is the current working directory. So any relative paths that we encounter, that is any paths that don't begin with the root folder, will be relative to the current working directory c slash bacon. So the relative path of just dot slash would represent the current working directory, this directory itself. So that would be here in bacon. The equivalent absolute path would be c slash bacon. Uh, dot dot would be the parent folder or parent directory of the current working directory. So dot dot slash this relative path, which doesn't begin with the root, that's what makes it relative, that would be the parent of bacon which is why its equivalent absolute path is c slash. Now we could also have a relative path that is dot slash fizz. That just means this current folder slash fizz. Uh, since the current working directory is c slash bacon, then this, the equivalent absolute path would be c slash bacon slash fizz. Or we could say uh, dot slash fizz slash spam dot txt. This would be the current working directory the folder fizz in the current working directory, and then the spam.txt file inside that fizz folder, and so on.
Now I'm going to bring up a terminal window uh, or a command line window. Uh, we'll go into this in future lessons, but we can see right here the terminal is currently set to my home directory as its current working directory. On Windows, you'll see the uh, current working directory right here, and I can enter the cd command to change the current working directory. Let's say I want to move to the desktop. Now this is a file path. It does not begin with the root folder, that c colon slash. So this is going to be relative to c slash user slash al, which is why I ch now change the current working folder to c slash user slash al slash desktop. And then if I wanted to go back up a folder, I could change the current working directory to the dot dot uh, special name folder. That just means the parent of the current working directory, which is c slash user slash al slash desktop, which is why I go back up one folder. And I could just, maybe uh, maybe I want to go to the parent of the parent of the current working directory, and then I would end up here in the root folder. Or I could always just specify an absolute folder to change the current working directory to. Maybe I just want to go to users al desktop. Now this is a file path, and it begins with the root folder, so this is an absolute file path. And I'm telling the command line window that I want to set the current working folder to this absolute file path, and then that's what happens right here. Now understanding file paths will really help you understand command lines and terminals, which we'll be going into in the next lesson.